Yeah. He got too bored with Tim Hawking. He's like, Papa. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. All right. <coughs> Father God, we bow before you and we give thanks for this awesome day that you have blessed us with, God. As we study your word and as we are uh, uh, getting educated under your um, influence and your direction, Father, we submit back to you so you can you can uh, uh, guide us, teach us, and enrich us in the knowledge of your will, Father. We bow before you, the Almighty God, the Spirit of the living God, teach us today. Teach us what you have to speak to us. As Jesus said, he who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. God, I pray that you would open our ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is about to speak to us. Have your way through us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. As we are studying this uh, uh, Bible study in the beginning, the more and more we study, the more and more we look into it, you will see um, so many things. One of the most debated, most argued uh, thing about the Bible is Genesis 1.1. 1.1 is the most argued and more, most debated uh, uh, um, verse in the whole Bible, nothing else, not even Jesus turning water into wine or uh, not even Jesus being crucified, not even Jesus being resurrected. The most, most argued uh, uh, verse in the whole Bible is Genesis 1.1. But for us, that is the most essential verse that you and me, as a Christian, if you believe in the Christian God, the God of the Bible, that is the most essential scripture. If you eliminate that scripture, your faith is a dangly thing. There is no root for it. The one, one, one is the, the Genesis 1 1 is what gives us the origin. You know, anything on this earth, we have to remember, if it has a beginning, there will be an ending. If there is no beginning, there is no ending. So the thing that happens in here is, what is your beginning? When, when, uh, the, uh, the, when we do not know our beginning, our end is always complicated. It's always confusing. It's always. The reason is, if, and that's where, if, if you look in the Bible, he who has begun a good work will also finish it. That's what the Bible says. So if he didn't begin us, there is no reason for him to finish it. You know, when we do not connect to our God that he began me, he, he begot me, he was the origin of me. If you don't go there, then there is no reason for us to expect God now. In any of our things that we go through, any things that we go through, uh, any instances in our life, there is no point for resurrection. There is no point for anything else if you don't go to the origin and believe that is my beginning. God begot me. God gave me life. God is the one who created this whole creation. If we don't go there, the most important thing that I want us to understand again and again, I'm, I'm about to conclude, God willing, either this week or next week, I will conclude this series. The most important thing that we have to understand Many people out there debate about this God. The God, you know, many people have the question about, oh, who created the creator? You know, that, 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 that's like, a, um, um, it, in a way, the, the image of the God that they are thinking is not the God that we know of the Bible. God is not the, 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 he is not a limitation to the creation. You have to understand that part. That is why what kind of a man it would be, what kind of a king it would be that would strip himself off. When we look at Jesus Christ, we only look at him as God becoming flesh. But you have to understand, the one who created the whole creation is becoming part of that creation. That is the ultimate sacrifice. Yes, we look at the cross, we look at the uh, uh, burial and all those things and we, we take uh, great pleasure in it and great hope in it and we build our faith all over it, which is awesome, which is good. But the true sacrifice began, or the, the origin for the true sacrifice is when he gave up his status, his godly status and became a man. 
God who is unlimited, God who is beyond, God he, who is beyond all these restrictions. That's why I brought this thing back again. Though Genesis 1, 1 talks about in the beginning, what began there? Remember, many people, many of the, the science or scientists, what they talk about is time. And every one of us know time is not a constant. Time cannot be a constant. It is always fluid. So there are, even in, 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 in the laws of physics or laws of uh, uh, other things, wherever time comes into, you have to take an assumption, not a certainty. There is no, there is no certainty for it. And then, now, God is putting time in place. And now the same God we read about in the book of Revelation, Revelation 21, where he takes away time. And then comes the, the eternity, where God wants us to live with him forever. The, 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 the created thing, the Genesis 1-1 talks about the unseen world conceiving the seen world. The seen world is coming out of the unseen world. Just because we did not see it, just because we, we do not understand. Bible clearly says that, Gen uh, Hebrews 11th chapter, in there it clearly says, By faith we understand that the worlds were created, the seen things were created out of the unseen. Unseen gave birth to the seen. So now what happens now, what is happening now is the unseen is the, the, the seen is now questioning the unseen. It's like, it's like my child coming to me and telling me, my, my son always, he, this is something, uh, 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 as soon as uh, we, we have the baby, she, he thinks he's a better daddy than me. He thinks he knows how to, uh, how to really take care of his sister. I appreciate his heart, but I am the daddy. So we, 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 uh, we oftentimes what is happening here is this is a big thing in, in, in the even in the scientific research it's it's like this it's simple as this you know what is what it is a plus b whole square equals a square plus b square plus 2ab that's <laughs> that's a plus b whole square but just because you know a plus b whole square is equals so and so doesn't mean there is no need for a and b you cannot derive that. Now I know A plus B whole square equals A square plus B square plus 2AB. So I don't need A and B. That's how ridiculous the arguments are sometimes. Just because I figured out all the gaps in this creation or I was able to figure out parts of the gaps that I thought were unexplainable, now I can explain it. There is no need for a creator. Just because you figured out something doesn't mean there was, you know, just, be, just because we figured out how to do uh, 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 certain uh, things or, or building this doesn't mean there is no bonding in there. There has to be molecular bonding in beh behind it for it to work. You cannot deny that. So, so the same thing happens with, with God. Now, when we are questioning God, everybody, this is not for you and me. I want us to be well equipped and well prepared for everybody that is trying to pick excuses to walk away from God. That's nothing but excuses. There are some people that are genuinely ignorant. I understand that God will reveal himself to them. But there are people who pick excuses after excuses to, to walk away from God. That's where as a Christian, as a believer, as a person who believes in the God who created the whole creation, we need to be well aware of how things can work. All right. Now, there is another beautiful statement I want, to, I want, I want us to be aware of also through this study. Just because a scientist makes a statement, that doesn't mean it's a scientific statement. Just because a scientist makes a statement, that doesn't mean it's a scientific statement. That is what the society is right now. Just because a great mind said something, doesn't mean it is proof. 
Everybody is running after the words of people they, they idolize or they worship. They, they think he, he or she is the greatest thing that ever, earth has ever received. And when they look at that and then they, continue, they, they come to the conclusion, this is it. The statement that was made by that man is the truth. Without even, uh, uh, find, without even trying to find evidence. As we have studied for the evolution... There is no observed evidence for it to have a macro evolution. Macro evolution is moving from one to another species. Becoming one, one, starting at one species and becoming another species. There is no observed evidence for it. Because the answer they give is it has to take a long time. For you to understand that concept. Yes, I agree, I agree with you. I, I, I understand that you are trying to uh, 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 tell me something. But you are not giving me the chance to say that is still not proven. Because you can, you can never, okay, if that's the case, it took millions of years for me to become this from an ape. I, I, I understand your statement. Let me go through that millions of years where I can observe it. That's what is science. Science is about observation, not guessing. If you are guessing, it ain't science. Anybody can guess. Anybody in the world can guess. So this is, this is where us as a Christians, we have to understand whatever we are seeing, the seen creation, all the seen creation came from unseen. If we understand that the two realms, the seen realm and the unseen realm, Bible talks about it as heavenlies. The unseen realm, if you do not understand the unseen realm, God of hosts, the Bible talks about the Lord of hosts. You know, that's one of the names that we give to God, right? What are those hosts? I never seen them. The hosts that they talk about are present in the unseen, not in the seen. And we have to always, always come back to that, conclu that, 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 uh, that starting point. Are we talking about the seen or the unseen? And now, and this unseen world can define the seen world, but not the other way around. I can give birth to a son. A son can never give birth to me. Chicken, chicken can make an egg, but egg cannot make the chicken from which it came. So the same thing we have to, the unseen, the, the, the egg that came, it can continue to make more chickens. It may do that, but that it can never make the mama chicken it came from. So we have to understand this realm. When we understand the power of this unseen realm, then our faith will get stronger. Otherwise, we are always limiting ourselves to this seen realm. What I see, that's where, what, what does the word of God require of us? What does the word of God demand of us is, do not walk by sight, but by faith. Faith for what? The seen realm doesn't need faith. But the unseen realm requires, demands faith. Without faith, Bible says it is impossible to please God. Why do you need faith? You don't need faith for you to see this chair. It is right there. If you open your eyes, it's right there. But you need faith for you to comprehend where two or three gather together, there I will be. For them, for you to understand that, for you to own it, for you to receive it, you have to have faith. That is not, that cannot be done with your intelligence. It can only be done with your faith sense. There are people that argue with it. Why in the world, oh, just because you cannot explain something, all you would say is use faith. The problem with that is, you know, I am going by the loss of unseen. I'm not going by the loss of seen. I'm not trying to comprehend things of the, the seen world. I'm trying to go to the unseen world. So if I'm going to that, I have to abide by those rules. Whether you agree with me or not, I don't care. 
Why are you driving on the left side of the road? Because I'm in Ireland. Not in America. I'm in a different land. I have to go by those rules, those laws. That's where a Christian, a believer gets very confused. And it is so hard, so hard these days, especially the way we are conducting our life, the way we are living our lives. It is so hard for us to believe in the unseen. Every day we are, we are pulling ourselves down. We are trying to live by sight more and more instead of living by faith. So I want you to make a test of yourself. Find out how, if, 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 if any given instance in my life, what is my first reaction? Am I reacting as if I am in the seen realm or am I reacting as somebody who is even connected to the unseen realm? You know, when we look at the unseen realm, then we can look at the big God. When we can look at the big God, your possibilities become innumerable. That's where God boldly says, with men it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. No matter what you want to call it, it is possible because we are not limiting to the seen world. We are going to the unseen world. That is our origin. The unseen world gave birth to the seen world. That is Genesis 1.1. That is where time began. God be began the time. You with me? If God started the time, he is not limited to time. Amen? Do you agree with me on that? If you create something, you are not limited to that. It might help you, it might go with you, it might work for you, it might benefit you, it might even increase your stature or status, but it, is, it doesn't limit you. The same thing happens with time. Time is a key factor whenever you're trying to debate with somebody uh, or whenever somebody is trying to uh, uh, say, oh, who began this, who, what all kinds of things we talk about, the the. the even us, we cannot, we can, we can interpret so much of a time backwards that we can almost interpret the beginning of the time. But before the time, there is something else that we don't know. That's where we have to bring the Creator. We have to bow and salute behind, before Him, saying, God, thank you for creating me. The problem with many people, many of these uh, 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 scientists is, okay, if God is the God who created this cosmos, who's the, who created this whole universe, whole creation, if he created that whole thing, the magnanimity of it, when they look at it, it's so, you know, even just we get out and look at the stars, it's like, what a wonder. It's like, it feels like we are too little, too small, too insignificant. Then the God that created the whole creation, how is he interested in you who is a speck in the whole creation? That's their, that, that's their understanding. I'm like, man, that big of a guy, how is he connected? How is he, he, he interested in the lives of me who is the micro of the micro in, this, in the grand scheme of things? And that's that's exactly where the answer for that is there is nothing that he created on this, on this whole creation in his own image but man. Man is the only one that was created in his own image. And when we do not put that into the equation, we will always struggle. We will always struggle. Always, again and again, I say, go back to that scripture where it says, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is man that you are mindful of him, that you created him little lower than yourself? Little lower than Elohim, Adonai. He, he was created a little lower than, that's all. The difference, you know, the, 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 the way it goes is God, man. That's, that's what connects God to man. Not because of anything else. 
many people try to talk about the spectacular universe, specta all, the, all about Mars, all about moon, and all about those things. Nothing, nothing out of all the found things, out of all the seen things so far, whatever NASA found, nothing is as spectacular, as great, as balanced as Earth. There is no other planet like Earth. Any geologist, any, astrolog uh, any uh, 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 astronomist has to agree with it. They all have to agree with that because after all the research, after all the search, you know how many times we hear people, let's find life over there. Let's do this thing. They keep searching and still don't find the right place. And finally they come to the conclusion, this is, they come to conclusion again and again. They try and they come back. They try and they come back. They try and they come back. Come back to the conclusion, this is the best place. Earth is the most stable planet most the best planet for anything to survive earth and god created it like that god has uh, uh, you know the, the 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 plan of god he reveals himself to us throughout the bible throughout these the, the the first two three chapters how it happened what happened who created what 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 happened when he gives us all that insight Though it is little too hard for us to comprehend, little too hard for us to well, plug in all the details and all those things. But he gives that information to us so we can be aware that your God is bigger than what you know. He always wants us to understand that he has more to offer to us. If he really want to intimidate us, I believe it won't take more than a second. He can intimidate us very well. We don't even need all those kinds of things. Just a lion in our face is more than enough. But God says, I have chosen you. I have created you in my image. And you have the dominion. He never did that to anybody. But to man. That's why Genesis 1 is important. And then the Genesis 2 is important. Genesis 2 talks about man, his origin. Now we are studying Genesis 3 where it is the fall of man. The man who, who, who should have been the, in charge of his creation is the same man who is falling down. There is a, the, 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 the problem here, we saw that, it is the devil is trying to tempt you know, Bible clearly says temptation will come. In this world, you will be tempted. You will have those tribulations. You will have those struggles. You will have issues. You will have problems. That's what God's word says. But here, the one who should have been the overcomer is being overtaken. That's what happens here. He's, being, he's, he's listening to something. How could, he, how could this happen? Why would this happen for, for, for a, a man that was created in the image of God is falling just simply like that? No, when you read, it, the, read the Bible, don't just read it, read it like a, read as, a, as, a, as a story that is happening one day one, this is day two, it is this. It's not like that. There are years that have passed. There is time that passed for every incident to happen. And, and uh, 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 he could have given us the names, all the names of the species that he had named. The whole Bible would have been filled with those things. But he gives us the important things that are important for us to live with. And he, they come and the serpent tempts them. And not only the, when, when, when the serpent tempts woman saw and she gets tempted. We, we studied on it last week, the eye gate and the ear gate, the most important things. What are you letting your ears what are you lending your ears to? And what are you watching with your eyes? Those are very important. Now, how does the devil do it? How can the devil have victory in my life? The biggest tool, the biggest thing that he uses against us is doubt. Doubt. You know, the, the, the problem with them uh, 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 is, you know, you might think they ate the fruit. That's what you might think. But in reality, the simplest question 
Now I'll ask you something. Who would go to hell? Can you answer? Who would go to hell? I'm, I'm here for answers. Which person can go to hell? Let me, let me test the church. Am I teaching the church or not? I'm sorry? No, I'm not talking about Adam and Eve in, gen, in general. Right now, let's take this thing. Who would go to hell? Who does not believe in Jesus, okay? Any other answers? Okay? Uh, yeah, okay? Any other answers? Anybody? Okay. Yeah. She said save, saved and that. Okay. I'll ask my worship leader. Who would go to hell? <laughs> who? Whom do you think would go to hell in general? Don't know Christ? Don't believe? Don't do don't Okay, awesome. All right, so, thank you. For all these things, simple deduction is the people who did not believe in the gospel, the people who did not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the people who wouldn't accept that what God has given to them. They do not believe what was given to them. That's, th that's the sin today. Do you think it would be anything different that day? It's the same thing. God said, if you eat this, you will die. And, the, and, and these people did not believe what God said. When the devil came and asked, do you think you, you're going to really die? And they started peddling back. So in other words, they gave up their faith. They gave up their belief. That's when the devil can attack us. The moment we give up on our faith is when we get attacked by the devil. When we stop believing, that's the place, that's the area where the devil will attack us. That's exactly gave room for him. Otherwise, devil couldn't do anything in their lives. He, they, couldn't do, they couldn't change anything. Right now, the devil can throw anything at me, but can't, he can't stop me from going into heaven because I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and I confess it with my mouth. And I receive him as my Lord and Savior. Since I do that, I do not go to hell. He can do anything he wants. I am back in his presence. Amen? The same thing is here. If only, if only Eve and Adam, if they're stuck to their belief. Eating the fruit is a byproduct. Don't eat the fruit is not the problem here. The problem here is they stepped away from what they believe. That was the problem, that is the problem, and that will be the problem. Forever. I'm going to present to you a simple statement, a simple uh, story that would help in how we can uh, um, educate ourselves not to fall into the temptation. Go with me, uh, no, not temptation, the temptation of doubt. Go with me to the book of uh, uh, Gospel according to John, starting at 10th, 10th chapter, starting at verse 22. Gospel according to John, 10th chapter, verse 22. It reads like this. Now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are Christ, tell us plainly. From their questioning, what we look at it as, like, that's a genuine question. How many times we ask God to do that to us. God, why don't you show yourself to me? Why don't you do this to me? If it is what you wanted me to do, if it is, I am, I'm guilty of that many times. I ask God, God, if it is, if it is your will, if it is, if this is what you wanted me to do, why am I going through this? Why am I uh, going through all these kinds of things? That's the same thing they come and ask. If it is you, reveal yourself. Why can't you make it plain to me? 
And then he then they asked that question and Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. I told you but you do not believe. The problem is not about God telling or God showing himself to us. If you do not mix your faith to it, if you do not believe in what God says, no matter what he says, no matter what he does, it's not going to make any difference in our lives. That is never going to, you know, it is your job to make up your mind. Not God's job. We blame on God. God help me in this. God change my mind. God do this for me. It's not his job. You have to make up your mind. Irrespective, God can show million signs and wonders to you. It is you who have to come to the conclusion saying, yes, that is enough. That is my God. I will believe in him. This is the word of God and I believe in this word. This miracle is mine. I believe you, you keep on, if you keep looking for things and things and things. The more and more you look at it, how much, even if it is black and white, God staring into your face, you won't believe. That's how powerful doubt is. So we need to fight the doubt by believing. Doubts will come. Doubts may come. That's the right time where we run back to our belief. Where we go back to that belief system. What God told us. God said so. So it will be. And at that moment I would simply ask a simple thing. If Eve were to believe in what God said. What would she say? Yes. We will die. Simple. Game over. That one state, um, statement of affirmation would have en ended the whole story. She didn't have to say, I will not eat fruit. She didn't have to do any kind of argument. God's word said so, I will not do it. That is it. I will die. So how many of us have the confidence that Jesus Christ is my fa faith giver? How many of us has the faith, has that power to believe that Jesus is my resurrection power? Jesus is my everything. He is my answer. He is the answer for my prayer. He is the answer for my, for my need. We are doing the same mistake Eve did. We think we are better than Eve. Yet we do the same thing Eve did. Adam and Eve, the same thing is going on. The, the Bible clearly says, there is nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. The devil can't throw anything new at us than his good old tricks. It's been there. It's working in his life. It's been working. It is still working now. It is still going to work if you let it. So today I believe, I pray that we can take a stance against this. They were not able to believe. They were not able to believe even though God, Jesus himself told them. I am the light. I am the way. I am the truth. He revealed himself. It wasn't like he is hiding. He read the scriptures right in front of their face and said, This became true amongst you. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. He reads the scripture and says, yes, this have become true in your life. Right now. He, he revealed himself irrespective of how many times he told. Irrespective of how many times he revealed himself. They still struggled because they never chose to believe. It's again something that we have to understand. Is God's healing real? Is God's power real? Is God's love real? I'm going to tell you something. Believe in it. Believe in it and see the benefits of it. You cannot see if it is real or not by analyzing it. By criticizing it. By staying out of it. You can only know it by believing it. Many of us get excited with God's word. Many of us are excited about God and all those things. But more than excitement, God requires us to be believers. He didn't ask for anybody else but to believe. He needs believers. A believer's job, after all, is to believe. That was the biggest struggle for Eve. It's not the fruit. 
Those are all byproducts. It's not adultery. Adultery comes out of unbelief. Any sin you talk about, it all stems from unbelief. Even Israel, the Bible clearly says they were not able to receive their promise because they did not mix their faith with the word of God. That's what the, clearly, the Bible clearly says. They did not mix it. The word was nigh you. Bible says the word was nigh them. It was so close to them. They were the ones. They should have been the inherit the people that should be inheriting the kingdom of God. Though those were the chosen generation. Yet they did not choose to believe. God opened the doors for us today. He gave us the opportunity to believe. Though that song sounds silly from Shrek, I believe, I believe, I believe. We have to be that. We have to be that. I believe. I believe. I believe. If God's word says so, I believe. By his stripes I am healed. I believe. I believe that he is my resurrection. But I believe he forgave my sins. Many people even doubt their salvation. Only reason for that is they do not believe in the word of God. We're always looking at our works. We're always looking at our performance. That's where the devil is. He's trying to put the doubts in us saying, Oh, are you really saved? I don't even know the difference. What is the real being really saved and unreal saved? I, I, don't, I don't know. If you're saved, you're saved. So, so this, I believe, I pray that it would encourage all of us to step up. To walk beyond these fears, these doubts, and go continually in that belief system. Where if God's word said something, we believe it. Adam and Eve did not fail because they ate the fruit. Because they did not believe in their God. They did not believe in the sovereignty of their God. They did not believe in, their abil in God's ability. Or they did not believe in, in, in what God said is true. I don't need to consult with anybody when it comes to God's word, God's will. If God's word says so, so be it. How many of us are giving such an authority to this word? I think that's where our true Christian life starts. Not when we go to church, not when we are able to pray, not when we are able to sing, but how much are we subjecting to God's word? How much are we believing what he said? We, when we do not believe what he said, it is so challenging for you to believe what he is saying. When you can't believe Legos or the, you cannot believe the Rama word from God. What He is speaking to you now, it's always challenging. We have to take God by His word. That's the lesson in Genesis three, and that's still the lesson today. We have to take God by His word. If He said it, do it. If He is saying, "Do not lie," you best not lie. If he is saying, do not commit adultery, you best not. If he is saying, uh, um, uh, do not hate your brother, you better not. If he is saying to forgive your neighbor, you best do it. You don't know what I have gone through, brother. You don't know what that woman did to me. You don't, don't argue with me. I'm not the one who said it. It is God himself said that. Doesn't he know it hurts? He knows more than any one of us that it hurts to forgive. Because he paid the price to forg for forgiveness. So the, the, there we need to stop taking us into the equation and put God all the time. If God's word says so, I won't do it. If God's word is asking me to believe, I will be a believer. When we come to that conclusion, the same, the, 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 the glorious life that Adam and Eve were experiencing will be a continuum in our lives. 
Their downfall, we see the downfall here. We all know most of the things. I might, uh, for the time's sake, I won't go. I will show some of the downfall things of them. What happened, how God worked in that in itself. How God showed himself. How God revealed his plan of salvation in it. I'm going to study that last week, next week and we will end this study. But for now, I'm going to encourage you. Let us be believers, not doubters. If God said, is that what God said? You lying thief. Tell the same thing to the devil. You're a liar. That's the one who is putting that thought in us. Is that what God really said? Yes, indeed. If I have to learn more, he has given me the Holy Spirit. He will teach me. If I'm going in the wrong direction, he will correct me. That's what the word of God says. My sheep shall know my voice. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And then he says, he will restore my soul and leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake, not for our sake. We think we are living this life for our sake. No, no, no. It is God's plan, foreordained plan that we are here. We are not an accident. That, that's what makes for a Christian to, to believe you do not have any right to end a life. Unless it is trying to kill you. That's a different story. But any life, that's why abortion becomes so serious for a Christian. Because life it did not begin with us. It began with him. He is the originator of life. Amen? God bless you. I think I'm going to end there.